what it is the way it goes. Uh, but you know, hey, it's the weekend, so uh, perhaps I will I'll, I'll, I'll be able to get some sleep. We'll see. Uh, she starts tech though on either Sunday or Monday, so she might be uh, still you know. But it's the last show, so she can get through this week. And then the problem person uh, wrote a diatribe about why she's being horrible. And that she, it's just her health. And so her, <laughs> Lindsay's boss was like, well, why don't you, you know, like use some uh, sick time? You've got uh, almost 80 hours worth of sick time. So why don't you just go ahead and take that? And then you can take your vacation time on top of that. And then, you know, like be gone. Because, you know, if for some reason you decide to quit, you don't get any of your vacation time or your sick time. So you might as well use it up. And so Lindsay's hoping that she'll just do that. And then it'll alleviate some of the issue. Um, but, yeah, we, we shall see. We shall see. Um, yeah. But, uh, yeah, today uh, my kids... Well, I wasn't expecting that. Okay. Uh, my kids have field day in the elementary school. And so they're going to... Uh, and yesterday was 90 degrees. And I'm like, oh, guys, I'm sorry, so sorry. It's going to be, like, really bad. Today it's going to be a, a high of 65 <laughs> So I'm like, oh, well, that's 25 degrees cooler. That'll be a nice day for field day. So, awesome. I love how when we start these up, it's always an unstable connection. And then it eventually goes to a, a, a stable connection. So, uh, so yeah. So, what's, uh, what's new? What's shaking, kids? I can't even threaten you with... Uh, Quizzes because uh, we we've, we've done them so much this week we we're out so I'd have to find some uh, new quizzes to do which I may do <laughs> I may just because I'm tired and I'm like well I don't know might need to do that so anything new anything exciting happening come on guys help me out feed me Seymour. Am I streaming? Can at least somebody answer if I'm streaming? It says I'm streaming. Okay, just being quiet. Nope. Cool. There we go. Well, at least, at least I'm still streaming. <laughs> I just put a big post out there on uh, Instagram for the Mevo for the Logitech people. So I'm like, I better be streaming. I'm not streaming anymore. Oh no. Lettering for the year in the Royal Cross. She wasn't full varsity, but put in enough minutes to make the cut. That's good though, right? That's a proud Papa moment, correct? As a freshman, that's pretty. That's pretty cool. Took a day off today, was supposed to go to the hospital, keep my mom in company, but she got discharged. Well, that's that's good too, right? Yeah. Just a normal day off, nothing wrong with that. Um, uh, today I, I filled out birthday invites for my son's, whose birthday's in July, but we... A friend of his has a birthday in June, and... We got his birthday invite yesterday, and I'm like, that makes sense because school's still in session. No one's in session in June or July, and so I was like, well, she wasn't wrong to give the invites out now so that people can at least plan to be there. So I ended up having to make the invites for my son's birthday today, even though his birthday's July 16th. Um, and so we got that, but we got that all squared away, whatnot. Um, so that'll be that'll be good. So. Got that out there. And I was like, hey, bud, what, like, who do you want to invite? You've got 18 people you can invite. And he's like, well, most of the people hate me at school, so I, I don't want to invite them. And I'm like, that's a, that seems pretty, pretty strong there, kiddo. Hate? And he's like, well, I, and so we're going through all the kids that are in his class and whatnot. And then we're like, oh, what about that kid that invited you to his birthday party last year? And you went and he had the big bounce house outside and all that. And he goes, yeah, he, he punched me in the stomach yesterday. I'm like, well, did he, like, touch you in the stomach, or did he, like, punch you in the stomach? 
Oh, he walked up to me and said, let's fight, and then punched me in the stomach. <laughs> I'm like, damn, dude. I'm sorry. That's not good. Um, so I guess, so he invited five kids, six kids from his class, uh, from the 40-something kids that are there. And he's like, that's all I want to bring. I'm like, oh, okay, kid, I'm not going to make you bring more. But Vicious little chillins, so... I guess. One of these days I'd like to just do like hours and hours and hours and hours of hand studies just so I can get better at doing hands because my hands, while they look like hands, they are not the best hands. They're not like fully articulated. Just like that. Uh, that kid's a bully in the making. No, my kid got punched in the stomach. My kid's not a bully in the making. My kid is, he, he's quiet, keeps to himself kind of kiddo. And, uh, yeah, that other kid just, yeah. One of those policies you see on Am I the Assholes all the time about having to invite the whole class. Um, you can invite the whole class, but uh, if you are subtle about it, um, like I put the names on it and then put the, uh, of the kids that we want invited and then, you know, wrote a note to the teacher and said, hey, these are the kids that my son wants to invite to his birthday party. Then they, they let you get away with that. But if you just bring a, a shite ton of them or you, make a, or you have the kid pass them out, then yes, you have to have one for everybody so no one feels left out. I'm like, but my son has only been invited to uh, one birthday party this year. So it's not like, uh, not like my kid's getting invited to a lot of parties. <laughs> but what's really funny is there are only five boys in his entire grade. Like there are, uh, out of both classes, out of the 40 something kids, there's only five boys. It's all girls. And he definitely has some friends that are girls, but most of the girls that are in that are like super girly girls. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, you know, but there's the Paisleys and the whatever, and they are mean girl cliques. I've met them and they're just, yeah, not the, not my kids kind of, kind of, kind of group. <laughs> so he's going to go through almost all of elementary school with like no, no boys. And then some of the boys don't like him. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm sorry, dude. That sucks. Hmm. I mean, don't get me wrong. I think I had more friends that were female when I was in school anyways. And my older son definitely, well... I don't know if they're female. They were they were born female. I don't know what their gender is anymore, and I don't dare to ask. But uh, yeah, he's he's definitely uh, doesn't have a lot of dude friends. I would say my middle kid, he's just friends with everybody. So What the what was that? I'm also having one of those days that my my foot feels like it's not my foot. Like it's <laughs> like it's like every pair of socks I've put on feels like the the wrong sock. You know, I don't I don't know what it is. I think it's just something's out of whack. Just an off day. I'd love to go see Doctor Strange this weekend, but I just don't think there's going to be time. My kids all have things going on. I've got, um, I've got some stuff going on with uh, work. So I was like, well, maybe, maybe it'll have to wait. There's this custom carbonite. Did I, I don't know if I have it on the list or not, but there's a custom carbonite that needs to go out this, needs to be done this weekend. Um, so I can knock that out. The, uh, I did yesterday in the afternoon, I, uh, went in and re-silvered the, uh, the, the teeth here. So, uh, I went in actually with the, uh, Stuart Simple chrome mirror paint, this one here, the mirror paint, and actually went over the, that and the glue areas and it matches a little bit better on those. So those are actually ready to ship. Um, 
and the glue did uh, set really well so they should be locked in there nice and tight so these will these will ship out today okay my stream just stuttered that's fun I rushed out to see Doctor Strange because I was expecting a lot of spoilers, but I don't know if it's because I saw it or because there's been less less, less spoiler headlines, but I haven't really seen much. Getting. I keep seeing things on Reddit. They're like, well, when this guy killed, I'm like, damn it. I'm like, all right, so anything that says Marvel or MCU, I just block right now. Um, I don't, I, honestly, I don't even need to see it in the theater. I don't know, does, is it worth seeing in the theater, Macduff? Or is it one of those ones, like, I saw the Batman at home, and I was like, eh, I don't think I missed anything. <laughs> but I do have the Alamo season pass, so it's like I'm paying to be able to go see movies. It's just finding the time. If Alamo had daytime showings, then I would I would already have seen it, but they don't, their theater doesn't open till 6. Anybody else here seen the Doctor Strange and enjoyed it? Or didn't enjoy it? Without giving spoilers. If you really like 3D effects, see it in the theater. Otherwise, no rush. Well, I won't see it in 3D, because so I don't want to wear glasses during the show, so, uh, but, yeah, so, I, yeah, I guess take it or leave it. All right. I know my wife wants to see it, but I just... I don't know, maybe we can do a date night and make my kids babysit themselves. It was the first time in a while I felt like there were scenes made just for 3D, which is disappointing because I don't like watching movies in 3D. Ah, gotcha. Yeah, there's a lot of the... I've seen them on the commercials. There's a lot of the like people turning into cubes and shit like that flying out towards or the bus being split and coming at you. I can definitely see that as being a 3D thing, but to me, 3D is just a novelty. Major trail to hell in 3D. <laughs> yeah, I just, it's not a make or break for me. I'll go see Avatar in 3D just because I know that that is how, it's how he filmed it, you know? And maybe I'll go see that. I, I saw the first one in 3D, and I thought he did a really good job of using 3D, but not as a gimmick, but as an actual storytelling thing. But I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Have you all seen the trailer for the new Avatar and have anything to say about it? <laughs> Most people are like, why are we even getting this movie now? That was so 10 years ago, nobody cares. Yeah, James Cameron's doing it again. Yep. Blame it on Sam Raimi. He's a good storyteller, but I think his director directional style is dated now. Too many close-ups of people screaming. Too many 3D only scenes. Uh, oh, I forgot. I keep forgetting Sam Raimi directed the Doctor Strange. I don't know who I think directed it, but I keep forgetting it's him. One of the trailers didn't care because I didn't particularly care for the first one. I mean, everybody loved Fern Gully, right? So why not see Fern Gully live action? It worked for The Lion King. 
Yeah, yeah, another glitch. Wow. Oh, I guess they're having like major uh, cellular issues around here. And I don't know if that's also affecting the cable, but like yesterday, a good, like two or three of our subdivisions lost cell service. Um, and then I noticed that I was having issues as well. So I'm, I don't know if that's necessarily because of uh, that. I, I don't know. But yeah, so if I have like really kind of crappy service, that might be part of it. I don't know. <laughs> it may be Cox blocking. I, I, I'm not sure. All right. Uh, put you in the oven. Yeah, I think it's time to put you in the oven. We could do your stirrups real quick. Hey, Buck. How's it going, man? We were just discussing movies. Uh, Avatar and uh, Doctor Strange. But how are you doing today? Hey, Ananda, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Movies, yeah. So last night, I, you know, I'm trying to eat better so I've been doing all the cooking because I want to eat better and the best way to eat better is to cook your own damn food <laughs> and so I was uh I made chicken lettuce wraps last night and you know I always ask my kids I'm like hey does this sound good and they're like yeah that sounds great so I made chicken lettuce wraps and my wife was like damn these are great and I'm like I think they're pretty good and my kids are like mm. <laughs> like, damn it children I got one kid who Loves to drown everything in hot sauce, which is fine. But then if any any kind of dinner food has sweetness to it, he hates it. He's like, I just don't like sweet meat. I'm like, uh, I don't think that's true, but okay. Really, I have so little uh, interest in seeing that Top Gun. I've seen the trailers now for three years. I just don't care. Thank you. Just working. I did a thing yesterday to look for free pickup for mattresses. Picked up a new one for my son, and the map for the places put me in Omaha. And I was like, what the? And then I said, oh, hey, Paul. That's right. You're the, you're the same? Yeah, I just. The thing is, it's not like we're adding, like, sugar to our food. Like, the. Uh, the, the chicken lettuce wraps have a little bit of honey, like a, tab a tablespoon of honey and a teaspoon of sweet chili paste. And that's it. So, Buck, I guess I don't understand what you're doing. Like, free pickup for mattresses? Like, they're picking up your mattress or... Or it puts you in Omaha as your home delivery address. That's weird. Okay. The planes on big screen were enough to change my mind. That being said, yeah, we're saying, oh, okay, I got you. Okay. That being said, I probably won't go because I just don't care about. Uh, gotcha. I mean, I can tell you the entire movie. You're old. I'm not old. I'm as young as these young people. You killed my dad. Sorry. I'll never forgive you. I forgive you. Damn. <laughs> pew, pew. Someone dies. We're sad. Uh, I feel bad because I'm old and I let him down. And then, vroom, I win. Save the day. I did something a plane can never do. The end. So that's that's the movie. No, never had to put you in that area? That's, really, that's weird. Ah, huh. uh, okay. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Sounds totally correct. There will also be some uh, motorcycling with a woman and then some ambiguously gay volleyball. I can guarantee you. I've seen it in the previews. I know it's there again. So, but we're not gay. We're just not not gay. It, yeah, it, I, I just, I don't know. It's, it's just not, I mean, we've seen it a billion times, you know, it's like we've seen this movie before. They're just going to do the same movie. So I don't know, I don't know. Uh, 
plot twist, Maverick killed his son too, not just the dad. Then the next movie is going to be Ace's Kid's Kid, and the same thing. Tom Cruise is a walker. <laughs> I can outfly all you damn kids. Now somebody get my ladder. You need a ladder to climb in there? No, I'm like four foot four. I can't get into the up to the ladder. I'm at half of our chat discussing yesterday. I don't know. I'm just trying to bring up something that y'all seem to talk about, and you're talking about this, so as long as I can keep you talking, I don't care. <laughs> Oh, there'll be a flyby tower, and he'll do something uh, that can't be done in an airplane. And people are like, whoa, he can do that with an airplane. And then people who actually fly will be like, you can't do that with an airplane. Oh, wait, and I forgot the, they'll, they'll be obligatory this. <laughs> Out the cockpit. As he's flying by, because you know it's slow enough that out the out the the tower windows you can you can watch Tom Cruise do that for you. Wasn't it like 500, 800 hours of flight time that he put in. I wouldn't doubt it. That dude takes his shit seriously. I'll give him props for that. Like Tom Cruise takes his job seriously. Like for Mission Impossible, he's like, I'm gonna I'm gonna free climb this mountain because I have a movie where you know to hell with CGI. I, as a 900-year-old person, can, with the, with the power of intergalactic Scientology, can still scale a mountain at my age. I don't know what the hell I'm doing here. What are you doing here, Paul? I did see something that the fake top-secret plane they built was so realistic the Pentagon caught China repositioning satellites to take pictures of it? Really? That's funny. I think you just gave us a major spoiler to the movie. <laughs> There's a top secret plane that he's got to fly. Oh, no, no, no. Tom Cruise is the Scientology poster boy. Nope, that's fucked up, Paul. That ain't right. They're both in it, but no. It's definitely Tom Cruise. All right, just put that in the oven as is, Paul. I'm going to put my shoe back on because my foot's not happy. Top, top secret. It's a good movie. It's a messed up movie, but it's a good movie. All right, be right back. Ow. Kicking the things, kicking the things. Fifteen minutes. One year, I went to visit my kid. We got an Airbnb, and it was right across the street from the Scientology HQ. That was weird. Oh. That's weird. It's weird. It's so weird. The Iceman prequel to Top Gun. <laughs> Don't let it be no Uh, 
uh, Top Secret Hot Shots. That was the disturbing scene that I ranted about last week. Scarred me for life. Two guys trying to disguise themselves as a cow. Yeah, that's Top Secret, yeah. The, uh... <laughs> that scene is so funny. My favorite scene in that entire movie is the, uh, is the library when he meets the guy with the, the magnifying glass and he takes it off and his eye is actually that big. That's so funny. Everywhere I go, there's always something to remind me of another place in time. Oh, go, 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 go. So I went to go to get my kid yesterday from school. I show up an hour early like I normally do so that I can get some parking. And I get there and there is no parking at all anywhere. Like up the entire, up both sides of the street where I have to go get my kid. I'm like, what the? F and it's because there's baseball going on. Fucking baseball. But like, there's 1,200 kids at this school that have to be picked up. And it, an hour before school, clear up until after we left, there was no parking. So I'm like, where did 1,200 people? So they ended up parking, because it's like a four lane road, but like, uh, two of the lanes are parking, and so then it's just forward and backwards, you know, and then there, there's street parking. So there, and so what happened is seven, eight hundred cars parked in the street. So there was no traffic movement. There was no, it was such a fucking mess. I'm like, this is some bullshit. <laughs> but you know, hey, sports ball. It just angers me because I know if it was like a theatrical production that was taking up those spots, they would call the police and say, you can't park here. But because it's sports ball, they, uh, they're they like, oh, no, no, no. You know, this, this is where you got to be. Like parents were having to park like half a mile away from school, have the kids walk to them because there was just no be nowhere to be. It's bullshit. So I don't know what it's going to be like today. But my son informed me yesterday that tomorrow he's going to the zoo. I love that that is what they tell me. They don't say, hey, dad, <laughs> can I go to the zoo tomorrow with my friends? It's like, hey, dad, me and my friends are going to the zoo tomorrow. I'm like, oh, really? What time? He goes, from at 11. I'm like, awesome. How are you getting there? He goes, well, I need a ride. And I'm like, oh, well, that is not how we ask for things. <laughs> I understand. He's a teenager. That's what I think. That's so, yeah. That was a song about softball, more baseball. I 
haven't watched an episode of The Simpsons in years. I got something similar the other day. Dad, I'm sleeping at Emily's on Friday. Her dad will pick us up from practice, so I'll just see you guys Saturday morning. Uh, hold up, I got questions and logistics questions on this. Right? You're like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> I'm like, can, you, can I at least ask who? <laughs> at least you got an Emily out of it. I got a me and my friends. I'm like, all right, I need to know who friends are. And he's like, you don't even know who they are. I just, it's just their names. I'm like, names work. So then he gave me a bunch of names. I'm like, I don't, I don't know who they are. I'm like, what group of friend is this? And he goes, it's not my theater friends. It's my other friends. I'm like, okay. Hey, Randall. Leather. Leather. How you doing there, boss? Hope you're doing well, sir. Happy Friday. Needed to ask her jersey number to know who Emily. Ah, <laughs> there you go. I'm I'm exhausted, no sleep. Who needs sleep? We're never gonna get it. Um, and just, you know. But hey, today I find out that I uh, I get to call about jury duty again. Uh, to be told that I have to call back on Monday to find out about jury duty again. So there's that. What you working on? What you working on uh, lately, there, Randall? Hope you get to serve on a jury someday. I don't want to serve on a jury. That's the thing. It's like I, I, I would have not minded it at the beginning of May, but, but, it's now going to be the last week of of, of May. And what they're going to do is they're going to say, yeah, you got to serve on a jury, and it's going to go into June. And I've got too much stuff going on in June. So I'm like, not nah, you're you. You had an opportunity. I showed up that one day and you, you pawned it off. So I'm mean, hoping I'm doesn't, while I think it would be interesting, I got too much stuff to do. And apparently I can claim the, I am self-employed and if I do not work, I do not eat card. So we shall see. You're carving a Jedi werewolf. I learned yesterday that apparently there's a, a lot of uh, space werewolves in the MCU I was unaware of, but I didn't know that there were Jedi werewolves. Very, very cool. <laughs> I told you about the, the, the reception of the, the saddle, correct? Custom order? Yeah, I figured. Yeah, so apparently if, I, if, if I'm self-employed and I will n not be able to pay my rent or eat, I can claim, you know, I can, I can claim that as, a, as an out. Yeah, they were okay with it. Yeah, they didn't care. That was, that was the, the takeaway on that one. They just didn't care. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. And I have a custom carbonite for another retiree that I have to get done tonight. So, trying to trying to get that knocked out. Dog feels how I feel. It's sleepy. Is that a banana riding a burrow? Yeah. It's a banana burrow. <laughs> no, they're like, just needs a... Somebody was saying last week it looked like uh, Patrick from Spongebob. And I'm like, you do? And so then I put, a spun, uh, put his face on there. And uh, yeah, I probably should take that off because 
the uh, Sharpie, the Sherple will come through if I don't when I go to paint it. You're going to need some, is it acetone? Yes, acetone is what gets off Sharpie. Burr, 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 burr. And I'm sitting on this Lego job for the Tonight Show. It's done. I'm just waiting for them for give me approval. And I'm like, can we just can we just do it so I can be done and get it out of my life, get paid? Oh no, no, we used to use Sharpie all the time when I worked at Pearl. And uh, you use Sharpies to mark the PD, it's the pupil distance. And then when you go to clean them, even with an AR coating, you can use Sharpie and then just use a little bit of acetone. So you just keep acetone in a little squirt bottle and, just, and then just wipes it right off. The other thing that works really well with that is Expo Dry Race Board Cleaner. It dissolves Sharpie, it's crazy. So, uh, yeah, in case, in case you don't want to mess with acetone, but you're like, oh, but I've got a dry erase board. Just get some of the Expo dry erase board cleaner and you just spray it on. You just know. And that also takes nicotine off of wood, off of finished wood. I was really surprised with that one. <sighs> My mom figured that one out because she has a dry erase board and she oversprayed one day and they were heavy smokers back in the day. And she noticed that her uh, cabinets in her kitchen started to melt. <laughs> she wiped them down and she's like, oh, okay. Apparently it takes all of the, uh, all of the uh, nicotine off the wood. Man. Put dry erase marker on top of Sharpie first, then the uh, then the cleaner. It sometimes works even better. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, you can definitely use sharp or a dry erase board to remove Sharpie from a dry erase board, like dry erase marker over Sharpie to get rid of it from a dry erase board. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Use it on the walls and the library, which teens are being assholes with Sharpies. <sighs> oh no, I am totally excited to see you. It's just this, I got three hours of sleep last night, as did my wife. Just and it, so we are just both of us are just exhausted. She's super stressed out with work, and I think I am uh, super stressed out that my wife is super stressed out. <laughs> Yeah, on the three hours of sleep, right? Yeah. All right, Donke is done. Mule. So you can get him out of the oven there. What? Neeps. Thank you, Neeps. Eight months. Thank you very much. <laughs> Played boss. Mm. So, welcome, Neeps. Welcome. I need to get off my tukus and go get that uh, piece out of the oven. We're going to cut one arm off, though. How you doing today, Neeps? 
Thanks. Awesome. No, 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 no. It's okay, Ollie. I'm just getting this thing out of the oven. Working and lurking. Understandable. So I, uh, yeah, it's right here. I can show it to you. Uh, we were working on this yesterday. This is the Ori piece. This is a 3D diorama mama that we're gonna be lighting up. So we're almost done with it. We just need to put Ori in here, and then as far as the diorama goes, we're done with that. I just need to paint it and put the leaves on it and stuff. So we're, we're rocking and rolling on that one. So this one should be good um, to paint next week. Uh, we just have Ori to put in it, and then uh, paint and leaves and lights, and it'll be, and then we'll do the, the box, obviously. But yeah, it's almost done. It's a getting there. I, uh, yeah, I do like how it's turning out. It's turning out really nicely. Randall, 16 months. Thank you, sir. Boom. Thank you. Much appreciation. Uh, cufflinks will ship out this afternoon. Um, I had to wait for them to dry because I repainted them with the uh, Stuart Simple paint. Do we have a hype train going? Oh my goodness. So yeah, so here's the, uh, the cufflinks. So they turned out pretty good. Um, I mean, they look like what they look like. 16 months, that's a while, man. So they will ship out this afternoon. Uh, hype train. We're at 69%, kids. Said I wouldn't threaten with some with some uh, quizzes, but we might have to quiz it up. It's getting quiet. <laughs> Thanks, McDuff. Thank you, McDuff. Let's see if we can get to level one. We can. People have four fingers, Paul, not three fingers. They have four fingers and aft fingers, but they also have four fingers. So. Oh, look at that. Vex coming in hot. 81%. Hey, Diana's guy. Hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Happy Friday. It's Friday, Friday. What are we going to do with the Friday? I saw that woman on a TV show the other day. They brought her, oh, it was Is This Cake. <laughs> I was watching Is, is This Cake. Uh, Mikey Day is the host, who just looks like a serial killer who hasn't been caught yet. Aw, thanks there for the gifted sub. Look at that, we got level one done. Woo -woo. Thank you there, Vex. Thank you there, McDuff. McDuff, Randall, Neeps. And uh, McDuff again for, for uh, gift in that sub appreciate it but yeah so I, di I didn't know she was still considered a celebrity but apparently yes that's right and then they gave him a samurai sword to complete the look 
Yeah, yes, yes. They give him, yeah. Have you watched that show at all? The, is it, is it cake? It's, it's not good. <laughs> My kids are like, I am so sorry, guys. My kids were uh, interested in like half an episode. Yep. That was, that was a, uh, that was a show about cake. I mean, I understand what they were trying to get across, but um, yeah, it's just not not that riveting of a premise. And I like Mikey Day, and, and maybe they told him, you know, play up the fact that you look like a psychopath. Uh, you know, um, It's cake that looks like a thing. That's right. Coagul Coagulasol. Coagulasol. Interesting. Cool name. Coag if I'm saying that right. Coagulasol. I'm trying to put a vampire in there somewhere, but <laughs> like Dr. Acula or something, you know. Yeah. Yeah, and the cakes that look like a thing, it's like, can you tell which one of these cakes is not, or which one of these things is a cake? And I'm like, yeah, every single time, because, you know, usually, Mitch all together. I don't know what that means at all, but... Uh... <laughs> But I'm also exhausted, so we're just going to go with Coagula. I'm just going to call you Coagula. Not Caligula. That's a different different person altogether. But, um... <laughs> Are you off? You out of here? That, that last joke was too much. Oh, no, you're going to come over here and berate me? Oh. It's like, no, the couch is softer, Dad. I get it, dude. I get it. Couches are softer. Doctor Acula is is a Mitch Hedberg joke. Oh, is it? I uh, I went as Doctor Acula. No, I my wife went as Doctor Acula. I went as Father Ankenstein for Halloween one year. So then again, she she went to a Jesuit college. So everybody was Father something, and it was a, it was a big joke. So yeah, so she was Doctor Acula, and I was Father Ankenstein. <laughs> Back when, you know, we, we actually did the Halloweens. I mean, we still dress up for, like, I guess I dressed up this year, last year. I went as Snape. I still like the Halloweens, but the wife is like, eh. I think the older she gets, the less in, in, in involved she becomes with it. She used to do, like, really, I mean, she's a costume designer. You think she'd be, like, really down for it, but no, she's just like... <laughs> I have to do more of the work that I do every day. That's all right. I'm like, oh, okay, fair enough. But I still like it, so. And the whole point of growing out my hair. Oh, my God, I ran into a picture that I had taken for the new website with me with the not quite long hair, long hair. And, oh, my God, I'm like, dude, these pictures are awful. <laughs> Saw it this morning, and I'm like, oh, my God. Choices, Paul. Choices. Ringling Brothers Barnum and Bailey is coming back. Huh? Thank you, McDuff. Completed level two. Thank you, three gift subs and 300 biddies. Thank you. I've collected all the level one emotes. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much for that hype train. Keeping it real. We don't like to travel too far on our destinations. Hey, the nerdy yo. What's up, man? So, yes, I use these Mevo cameras. They're actually wireless cameras. I got one parked right in front of me. That's the one I'm actually sculpting with. Um, and they're really, really nice because uh, they are completely wireless. So you can, like, pick them up, move them around. Whee! Now everybody seasick. All right, cool. Yeah, completely wireless, which is really, really nice. Um... 
and uh, long battery life on them. Uh, but that's why there's this iPad down here, which we act as it acts as our uh, picture in a picture because they don't offer that yet in their app. They're working on it, but they don't offer it yet. So we uh, we use this little iPad as our picture in picture. So uh, they're looking for people that have special abilities. Oh, they're looking for people that have special abilities. Oh, okay. My son wants to go to their uh, animation school. Apparently, he thinks. I can make anything, including money. Because um, <laughs> holy crap, that's an expensive school. It's, it's only, only $350,000 for a four-year degree at the Ringling Brothers Animation School. So um, I said, well, you are more than welcome to go there if you get scholarships. Because I won't let him choose a school in which he'll have that much debt coming out for animation. Yeah, they do have an animation. Yeah, and it's actually one of the top rated ones in the country. It's that and Cal Arts. Uh, and I said, why don't you try for Cal Arts? He's like, I don't want to go to California. I'm like, okay, that's fair. But, yeah. They, uh, it's like almost $90,000 a year. I'm like, oh, dude, no, dude. <laughs> I'm like, your sister is a doctor and did not have that. And she went to a, a prestigious, religious, like Jesuit school for pharma and then went to a med school after that. And even then, she didn't have that much student, like that much debt for college. It didn't cost her that much money to become a doctor. And you want to become an animator? I can guarantee you, you're not going to make doctor money as an animator. <laughs> so, dog wants out. Give me a second. There are other animation schools he can go to. Of course, he just did the college. You know, what's a good animation school? And then chose that one because it came up as number one, and so or two, whatever, and so. He's like, well, that's the one I want to go to, definitely. And I'm like, oh, well, of course you do, because it's the most expensive. And I'm like, you know, aim high, dude. If you can, if you can get the scholarships, or if you can get a free ride, by all means. So, does anybody here have a weird talent that they would like to? Uh, join the circus for? <laughs> Research better. Well, he'll get there. I'm not worried about it. He's a freshman. I'm not terribly concerned. I can animate cakes that look like things on a type room. There you go. There you go. You've got skills to pay the bills. So, uh, yeah. We'll be holding auditions. The funniest audition story I ever heard was a friend of mine auditioned to be in the Blue Man group. And so everybody went in and uh, there's like three rounds of auditions. And, and so uh, they, they did the first round and uh, they, they, you know, where you do the drumming and whatever and he, and he made it past that one. And then they go into another room and they actually start meeting some of the Blue Man group. And then they're like, okay, if we call your name, you go through that door, or, or we, 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 no, was, you have two doors, and uh, we'll tell you which door to go through. And then, you know, and so they're going down the list, and they're like, all right, door one, door two, door two, door two, door one, door one, you know, whatever. And so it comes to him, he gets door two, and he's like, all right, cool. And so then he goes off in the door two, and it closes behind him, and he's in an alley in the back of the theater. <laughs> like... They don't even tell you you don't get it. They just, just like deposit you in the back of the alley. And they're like, all right, go home. <laughs> like, damn. <laughs> it's right, right. That's the best, the best feedback you can expect is <laughs> just, here's an alley. <laughs> Time to reenact your Batman fantasies. I don't know. Uh, 
<laughs> Apparently, he didn't have the right look. Even though he's a bald dude, he didn't he didn't look blue man enough. I'm like, yeah, fair enough. He had all the skills, he just didn't have the look, and that's why they gave him the the boot. Worst audition I've ever done when I was back when I was an actor was when I was told, we'll never hire you as an actor. <laughs> I'm like, oh, oh, okay, cool. Thanks. I, I appreciate that. <laughs> Rubbing alcohol, not the drinky alcohol. I'm already tired enough. So how many of you read books and then like, how many of you feel pressure to finish a book even though you're not enjoying the book? I know Big Duff does because that's his job. <laughs> But how many of you have like been in the middle of a book and you're like, I really should finish this because I've started it, but at the same time, I'm like, I don't care. Nope, you don't finish them? If I don't like it by chapter three, the book is gone. Really? Wow. I'm listening to a book right now that was recommended on stream and they're like, the, 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 the first few chapters are really rough. You got to get past the first few chapters. So I am struggle busting through this book. Yeah, I gotcha. I'm, and granted, I'm listening to books. I'm not actually reading them because Paul ain't got no time to read. But So I'm listening to this book. And the characterization is not really there. Like, she does three voices but there's like 700 characters, so I can't tell who's talking half the time. <laughs> so trying to follow, and there's not a lot of, this person said, Gideon said, and this person, or they are, but the names are like 700 characters. And so I'm like, did you just finish a sentence? Oh, that was that person's name. And it's like a lot of that going on, and I'm like, okay. And it's also one of those books that starts in the middle of the story, you know, like, like they've established, the, they don't establish the world. There's no, like, intro into it. It's just, this is happening, and then, oh, now we got to go to this other world. Oh, there's other worlds. And then there's old technology because we're on this world. And I'm like, eh, eh, I, d I don't get it, yeah. By Jim Butcher's son, got busy for a few days, can't pick it. Oh, okay. Man voice one, female voice, narrator. That's right. Um... And so I'm like, uh, I'm just, she has, no, she has high pitched voice, low pitched voice, and then gravel voice. That's all she has. And I'm like, okay. And so I'm, you know, I'm, I'm struggling. I was told, and the thing is, is there's two books and they're like, they're so good. You gotta read them. I'm like, all, all right. You know, I'm trying, I'm trying. I can't, I can't get into it. <laughs> And I have nothing against female narrators. I mean, there are definitely some really good female narrators out there, but there's a bunch of bad male narrators that I avoid. One of them is even a, a guy I know. And I'm like, oh, man, this guy actually narrates books? I'm going to listen to his book. Oh, no. I got maybe an hour into it, and I'm like, I, I can't listen to another minute of you talking. <laughs> I'm sure it would be different if I read it, but the the problem is there is um, I I just don't have time to read. I really don't. And and I'm I'm one of those guys. I'm an audible learner, and so if I start to read a book, I fall asleep. I fall asleep and fall asleep and fall asleep. And it takes me forever to read anything because I just uh, I have to maintain. I have to stay busy while I'm listening to something. Even theater. When I do theater, I've got to be doing something to even watch it. Um, just because that's if not, I fall asleep. It's like a weird form of narcolepsy. 
that I developed when I had mono for 18 months when I was in high school and didn't know I had mono for 18 months. Um, I've been reading the same 350-page book for the last year. Exactly. Uh, yeah. And so, yeah, I can't, I can't, I can't do it. I try. I do try, but it doesn't work. But there are some books, like there's some authors I've never even heard of before, but if it's got a narrator that I enjoy, I'm like, you, you've you got me on this book. I'll listen to this book. It could be hot garbage, but I know the narrator is good, so they'll do it service. And sometimes the, the book isn't good, but I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. And I just finished up, uh, okay, you can go in the oven. Just finished up this D&D book with my kids um, that we were reading. So we wrapped that one up last night. And I'm like, okay, did you guys like that one? And they're like, yeah, yeah, we like that one. I'm like, and they're like, is there more? Yeah, let me look. Oh, yeah, there's a second book comes out in November. And I'm like, oh. But my wife went to, sh so I read my kids' books, which is hilarious. Like, I'll read them stories every night for 45 minutes. Don't fall asleep. But that's because I'm reading out loud to them. And anymore, if I do, if I have to, like design a show, I have to read it out loud because otherwise I fall asleep. Um, and I've fallen asleep a couple times reading to them. That's that, that's happened. Um, but my wife was in Chicago. When she was in Chicago, she was at the museum, and they have these tiny little models. I can't remember what they're called. Uh, they're little dioramas, and they're like, what if you could shrink down and find yourself inside those models, and then there's a mystery that you have to solve. So someone actually developed a book series. It's like the 64 rooms or something like that. And so my wife like, that looks really, really interesting. So we picked up one of those. So that's what we're going to start next. But my kids much prefer uh, fantasy uh, over realism. And I think a lot of that is because they don't want to be, if it gets too real, they, they start to imagine themselves as those people, and then my, especially my youngest gets really sad if anything bad happens. <laughs> like we read Life on Mars, and uh, my son bawled, like, I think like six or seven times during that one, like couldn't get to sleep because he was beside himself because the old man in that book is dying, and my son has had too many tragedies in his life at a ripe old age of seven, so. Oh, that sucked. Um, already so he yeah he doesn't handle that well <laughs> all right my dog needs in and uh, I need to put this one in the oven so give me a second guys I'm coming I'm coming learn to use a door handle like everyone else I miss the dog door all right boss do -do 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 -do. Wee! Ha 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 ha! But then I did see that a a person that whose books I like listening to just came out with a new one. And I was like, ooh, I might have to, might have to get that one, just skip this other one, so. Stupid people. Uh, I'm trying to figure out the name here. I'm going to tell you the book that I'm listening. So right now I'm listening to Gideon the Ninth, and I am on chapter four, and I still have 15 hours left to go. And I'm like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> There's uh, Mark Tufo's Lost Journals. I just finished a Mark Tufo book. Hey, uh, McDuff, have you read Lux by Brandon Sanderson yet? Is it any good? And then I also have Biomancer. So, which I should start. Oh, you don't like Sanderson. Oh. You don't like Sanderson, really? Okay. Fair enough. Why not? Does do you are you one of those people who thinks that he writes 
uh, as though everybody has no education. <laughs> like he writes beneath, like beneath him, or I think is what they say. Curious to know why you don't like him. Why don't you like? Not like I know the dude. I don't. You know, not gonna hurt my feelings at all. Stories tend to be okay to good, but his actual writing style literally puts me to sleep. Can't read more than a chapter without conking out. Fair enough. Uh, I really like Steelheart. I think that's the one that kind of got me. And this is actually book, Lux is book four in the Steelheart series. I did not like Mistborn.